Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you guys today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's we'll begin this time together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and praise you for today. Pray that, Lord, you would just strengthen us to learn from you this morning, to understand your word and to, to apply it in our own hearts and in our lives. Lord, in the lives of those around us, Lord, as we live it out. So, Father, I thank you for your grace, your goodness, your mercy. And I pray all this in Jesus' precious name. God's people say, Amen. Amen. So we're going to be in the, the book of Acts this morning, Acts uh, chapter 2. Um, we're looking at the early church and how they were uh, just really the birth of the church after uh, the Spirit comes there at the day of Pentecost and the church begins to flourish and to grow. And while you're turning there, just to remind you, you know, uh, today was the last day to bring in for Operation Christmas Child, to bring in boxes. Uh, I think we've got quite a few sitting over here. Mark counted them earlier. I think there's 87 boxes, so that's much better than what we did last year. Uh, so that's that's a praise. And so uh, hopefully, uh, you know, a few more will come in before the day is over, but grateful for each person that brought a box also. Uh, also, this coming Sunday, there is a business meeting after the uh, worship service, and so just be aware of that. Uh, also, the cottage prayer meetings are kind of coming to a close, or at least what we had scheduled for cottage prayer meetings. Uh, we had said through November 20th, so that's this coming Sunday. And obviously, if groups want to continue to go, they can, or if they want to take a break and then start back up in January. But I'm just grateful for each person that participated in a cottage prayer meeting, uh, the people who hosted a cottage prayer meeting. I believe uh, it blessed my life, and I'm hoping that it blessed yours as well for those that were involved in that. And when we think about meeting in people's homes, we're going to read here that that's what the early church was doing. They didn't have any structures to, to come to and to gather. Uh, and so we uh, see this example that is set for us. Although they did have uh, the temple, and you're going to read that they would go to the temple, but then what? They would spend time in the homes. You know, that's where ministry was taking place. And that's where the principles of the early church we see are for us. And so when we look at this passage of Scripture, I want us to see uh, that we're to be connected to one another. You know, there's no such thing as a lone ranger Christian. You know, again, in our society today, people are uh, isolated. One, they can never leave their house almost, and you can have everything brought to you. Just a few clicks, you can have your groceries brought to you, you can have a meal brought to you, you can have a, a, just whatever household item you can think of, just a few clicks, and as long as you got the credit card, hey, it'll show up at your house. And so people were becoming more uh, isolated in a sense. And that shouldn't be that way in the church. Now, I, I get it. Sometimes people can't physically make it to church. And we totally understand that. And we know they would be there if they could. And so that's why we have some folks that are on homebound. And we want to continue to lift them up, pray for them. But if you're able-bodied, you should be in church. <laughs> you should be meeting with other believers. And at least in a, a group setting of some type. Because it's in that group setting that we encourage one another, we hold one another accountable, and, and we grow. We grow. Uh, it's interesting that um, uh, through some study, I have seen that uh, this uh, book I was reading talked about, you know, when groups gather, and some say, we want to just grow deep in discipleship. We just want to grow deep in, in just knowing God's word, that you know what, people typically don't grow because they don't incorporate things like ministry. They don't incorporate things in that group like evangelism. They don't incorporate things in there like, like worship. It's those emphasis where you begin to apply. Because some people just take in a bunch of knowledge. Take in just a bunch of knowledge about the Bible, just Bible stories, Bible verses. But then don't really apply it in their life. They don't apply it. It's hard to apply it when you're off by yourself. When you're in community with others, guess what? You have that opportunity to do that. So let's look here in Acts chapter 2. And we're going to see, I'm going to begin in verse 40. It says, And with many words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, three, uh, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 
That, that's a pretty good day. That's a pretty good day of outreach. The word of God is proclaimed. People's hearts are impacted and touched. And now they have responded to the gospel. And guess what? They didn't just consider them just, okay, you're off on your own. Okay, good, we did our part. We, we shared the gospel. No, it says added to the church that day, what, about 3,000. Verse 42 shows then that guess, this is how they followed up. This is how they got people to be connected with one another. It says, verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all who had any need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And so it was a daily process. Yes, they had that one big event, 3,000. Well, guess what? There was an ongoing ministry, the ongoing uh, work of the church, and souls were being added daily. They didn't wait till the Sunday to see people saved. People were being saved throughout the week, which what meant people were interacting. They were interacting among themselves as believers, but what, they were also interacting with the people out in the world, out in the community, because that's where the lost people are. And they were bringing them into their own homes to do that. So what was the early church doing? Number one, we see there they were learning together. They were with one another in a learning environment. Notice what it says there in verse 42. Continued steadfastly in the doc apostles' doctrine and fellowship. They didn't just uh, study God's word on their own, but they were with a group of other believers. And I think that points to the uh, necessity of being in a group setting in order to learn. That's why, I, I, as I mentioned Sunday night, at the meet, I love Sunday school. I think Sunday school is one of the greatest uh, ministries that a church can have and i think it's tremendous and why because you're getting people in a smaller group what do you have fellowship in there guess what you open the, the word of god to do that and so we want to see that take place on a greater scale also but they were what learning together continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine you know this past sunday we saw how jesus prayed for those who would believe based on their words talking about what the apostles words Jesus was praying for them. And guess what? Here's the application of it. Here's uh, Peter as he is sharing with them. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. And those who gladly received his word, what this message, this sermon that Peter is saying, they're hearing it, they're receiving it. Guess what? Jesus has just prayed for them. He prayed for the apostles. Then he prayed for those who are going to listen to what Peter had to say and the other apostles. And it's the same way for us. We hear what the apostles are saying through the scripture, through the word of God. And so we're to be together in a learning environment together. And it's difficult to accomplish in a large group setting. There's, a, there's application for that. We see that. 3,000, that's a large group. But guess what? They break it down. They meet in the homes. And, uh, you know, depending on the size of the home, you know, social status sometimes a house church can be you know maybe like 12 20 people sometimes they if they had a little courtyard they could stuff a few more in there but you're not talking really large groups you're talking smaller uh, settings where they can do that and what were they doing there they were learning together but they were also what worshiping together they were worshiping in the homes it says in the breaking of bread and prayers it says in verse 42 again the breaking of bread, referring to what? The, uh, the Lord's Supper, sharing communion with one another, and prayer, an act of worship and devotion to the Lord. And so when God's people get together, there should be some prayer, right? There should be some um, opening the Word of God. There should be a time of, of worship also. So they were learning together. They were worshiping together. And guess what? They were, again, this whole thing about together, they were gathering together. It says, now all who believed were together and had all things in common. That's, that's fellowship. 
They, they hung out with one another. And that key word there, one another, it's in the scripture over and over and over again. How can you fulfill, fulfill I'll get that. How can you fulfill the one another commands by yourself? You can't. You, you can't fulfill them. Love one another, care for one another, encourage one another, right? You have to be with other people. So gathering together, and I think that was one of the things, you know, during the COVID uh, pandemic, the height of that, they talk about people feeling isolated. They were probably isolated before, and then even more so after that. It was difficult when we couldn't gather together. It really did. I don't know about you, but I, I, I miss the fellowship. I miss having that opportunity to see one another face to face. And I know we, uh, you know, with the video and stuff like that, I mean, it's a great tool, but it can't replace seeing someone. Uh, you know, giving someone a hug, a handshake, you know, a pat on the back or one of those things. But gathering together, that's an essential part of being a Christian, is gathering with other believers. Now again, some places in the world, they can't gather. I mean, it's, it's difficult to gather. You know, yeah, you could say, hey, we're going to go plant this church here in Indonesia, right on the corner, the most heavily Muslim place in the world, and they'd probably run you out of town. Other places, they, the, the local people there, they may uh, persecute or even kill them. And so, but the desire, the, the people who can't gather like that, you know what one of their number one desires is? Is to be with other believers. When they get that opportunity, man, they, they treat it as precious. And we need to as well. So that gathering together, that time of fellowship. So they were learning together, which is discipleship. They were worshiping together, obviously, which is worship. And they were gathering together, which is fellowship. They were having all things in common and, and helping one another. That leads to the fourth thing in this thing. And they were helping each other. And it says, and they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. They were meeting each other's needs. They were taking the time, taking the uh, opportunity to help and encourage one another. Help one another. We're talking here in a physical way. You know, physical needs. You know, sometimes when someone is sick and someone brings food to the house, what? That's ministering to them. That's, that's serving them in a tangible way. Maybe if someone uh, can't get out and mow their grass or something, someone goes to mow the yard or mow the grass or take care of them, run errands for them. There's a multitude of ways that people can help one another. But that's a sign of the early church. They were doing this together, and the world took notice of it. The world paid attention and said, that's different. We kind of expect it somewhat in our culture because there's still that influence of Christianity. But think in the early history of the church. It really was everyone, every man for themselves. You, you, you only helped those in your own family. You didn't necessarily help the stranger. You certainly didn't help someone from a different social class. You didn't do that. That's why when Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan, it was so shocking. The, the two religious leaders walked right by that man. But the Samaritan, he stops to help. And so Jesus makes that point uh, that, that ministry should cross whatever boundaries there are. So helping each other. And then finally they were sharing the gospel. They were doing evangelism. It says there was one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And so they were in one accord in the temple. Think about this. For them, you know, they were of a Jewish background, so they go to the temple, and they are still somewhat uh, observing many of the Jewish uh, rituals and those things. But when they're at the temple, guess who they're talking about? Talking about Jesus. They may be in a separate little group over here, and they, they're gathering. Don't you know after a while some people say, who? Who are those people? Well, what are they doing over here? And so they're like, oh, we believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And, you know, I'm sure they probably what? You know, some people get upset with them. Uh, but there was a public act of worship, a public act of being out there. But then breaking bread from house to house, they gathered in that smaller group. They gathered in that smaller setting. And here's the part I like. 
This, they, you know that the early church was a bunch of Baptists. It says, and they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. That is, that is my spiritual gift. You know, if it could be called a spiritual gift, I like to eat, and uh, especially at church, it's, it's good. You know, so, uh, but no, it's there's actually something about that, like sharing a meal together, builds community, builds fellowship, and having food. Uh, you know, sometimes we say, "Oh, people only come if there's food," and that's true, a lot of times. But if we have the right mentality about it, we can look past that somewhat and say, you know what, we're actually building fellowship here. We're actually being, uh, according to the word of God, I mean, I just think of all the, the big technical terms that you could put in here, discipleship, worship, fellowship, ministry, evangelism, they have one for eating. <laughs> eating, you know, that's, that's part of what the church does together. But there is a lot entailed in that. You know, if you sit down at a meal with someone, that's a different level of a connection to a person as opposed to you know hey you don't just invite anybody into your house to eat right you just um, so there is a, a idea there so so if groups that want to meet want to have food hey I'll be there right you know you, you, but no it's 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 actually a biblical precept a biblical uh, example of what they were doing and they were praising God they were having favor with all the people and that's what's interesting there as they lived out what Jesus taught them. And think about this. Jesus' method of teaching his disciples is really a whole lot different than what we try to do in our modern society. Jesus was pretty simple. He called some men to himself. He spent some time with them. He taught them the word of God, you know, going, you know, calling out scriptures. I saw a quote that said Jesus quoted at least 66 scriptures made over 90 allusions to Scripture. So Jesus pulls out the Old Testament. He's, he's demonstrating that. And then he goes to the cross and dies, and yet they knew what to do. How they know what to do? They had watched him. He had been, been with them, and they had, what, followed him. He didn't have some formal sit down in class, okay, now take notes, here you go. No, he, he just lived it out. And it's interesting, one person did take notes. You know who that was? That was Matthew, tax collector. Matthew, you know, being a good uh, bean counter and all of that, he took notes. That's what church history tells us. And guess what? We have the Gospel of Matthew. That was Matthew going, oh, he said that. Oh, he said that. <laughs> oh, he did this. He, he was actually over there taking notes uh, along the way, whether he did it as he was saying it or at the end of the day he's writing it down or something. But I think it's interesting. Uh, how Jesus taught and when you look at his life he never just sat down with like a formal setting it was just sharing life with him and I think we need to understand that too that in a small group setting it's easier to share life together than you can in a big group setting so as we think about it and look forward to moving ahead I, I would encourage uh, every believer to be part of a small group to be part of a group where you can grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And here at Indian River, that's in a, a, a Sunday school class, or we're going to be looking at calling it a Bible community group, or whatever we may end up calling it, having groups that meet in the homes. That's what I've been encouraged about the cottage prayer meetings. People have been meeting in the homes, and I think people are growing because of that. And I'm excited about that. Uh, I've realized we may be taking a break. There's a lot of groups that take a break. Till, the, till January or what have you, but hey, we, let's praise the Lord for how he set it up and then let's just walk in obedience to that. So let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll uh, conclude our time together and then we'll continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and thank you again for your grace and your goodness. Thank you that Lord, you taught your disciples so well that after your resurrection and your ascension, they actually knew what to do. They may not have realized they knew what to do, but Lord, they began to just walk in obedience to your spirit and they recalled the things that you taught them. And Lord, we look at the history of the early church and Lord, we see the example they set for us. So Lord, let us realize we can't reinvent the wheel. That Lord, we just have to get on board with your 
your way of making disciples. And Lord, that involves getting in a smaller group. Lord, for people who think that they can be a Christian all by themselves, they're, they're not reading the Word of God. We need to be in a group with someone else. We need to be connected to the uh, body of Christ, the, the local community, local church. And so, Father, I pray if there's anyone listening, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, that, Lord, that they would commit to being part and being physically present in church. Lord, to be part of a group where they can grow in your grace and your knowledge. So, Father, I, I thank you for this time. and just pray your blessing and favor. Pray all this in Jesus' precious name. God's people say, Amen. 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 All right, well, let's say our vision verse together and we'll conclude this time and then we'll have another time of prayer. But let's say this. Declare his glory among the nations. We get to do this. God bless you. Amen. <clears throat>